Hi again. In the previous video, we saw how to create a 3D cube in JavaScript using just individual points. In this video, I will show you how to extend that example to draw complete faces of the cube using triangles. So let's get started. Here's the cube that we had before. And uh, the basic 3D geometry is already there, but we want to add some proper faces to it, not just points. So it's going to be a little bit more complicated, but um, nothing really extraordinary. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, well, this was the perspective math that we did before, so I hope you remember that, but I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to t start talking about um, faces now. So, as you remember, um, we, we talked on the previous video about how each point of my um, cube points has a coordinate of um, minus one or plus one. So this is how my cube will look like in perspective projection that we explored before. And uh, here are my axes. So it's going to be like that, and it's going to go up out like that. And uh, let's call this x axis. X axis. Let's call this y axis, and let's call this the z axis. And um, yeah. So uh, for example, this this one point is going to have um, coordinates of minus one, minus one, minus one. That's it. So in order to draw this this uh, cube properly, I'm going to take each of, each of the faces and split it into a triangle. So let's take the front face, for example, the one that is closer to me. So the, the front face is going to be the one with z is equal to 1. And I'm going to split it into two triangles like that. So one of the triangles is going to be this one. And the other triangle is going to be that one. So what I need to do is I need to do this for every kind of face and uh, create these triangles. So um, let's, let's start doing that in, in the code. So instead of having vertices, I will have triangles. So what I will do is I will create a, a var triangles array, which will contain triangles instead of points. OK, so my inner geometry is going to go away like that. And what I will do is I will go through all of the dimensions, starting with dimension 0 and going up to dimension 2. And recall that dimension 0 is x, dimension 1 is y, and dimension 2 is z. So dimension is going to go up to and including 2, and then I'm going to increment my dimension. And this is going to be um, what I will use to, to generate my cube. And for each dimension, I will have one, one of two sides. So my side is going to be either minus 1 or it's going to be uh, a plus 1. And for example, for the Z case, we're going to have the front face and the back face. So these are going to be the cases where Z is equal to uh, 1 and Z is equal to minus 1, respectively. So this is going to be Z is equal to minus 1 at the back. And the same applies to the Y dimension and the X dimension, giving us um, two faces for each uh, of the three dimensions, uh, a total of, of six faces. Okay, so now that we have that, uh, we can actually generate all the different um, points. The way I'm going to generate all the triangles is by um, going through all my points, which I will need to, to generate again. And uh, I will do a filter on, on my points. And the filter is going to take a single point and it's going to check if it's of the right, um, of the right dimension, so if, it's, if, a lot, if it belongs to my side. So if the point at the particular dimension given has um, value is equal to, to the side that we want, then that point belongs to, to the, the list of points that are, are pertain to our particular side. Okay, so let's explain this code, but before we do that, let's actually regenerate the points correctly this time. It's not going to have all the points within the cube, so it's not going to have five points within the cube in each dimension. It's, it's just going to have the minus one and the plus one, so it's going to go like that, and then x is going to be plus equal to 2. And, and so it's going to have only x equal to minus 1 and x is equal to plus 1. And the same for y and the same for z here. Um, replace x with y, and here overall replace x with the z. And just push to the points an x, y, z point. Okay, so this filter here is maybe a little bit interesting. It goes through all the points and it filters, it calls this, this function for each point and if the point satisfies this condition, it keeps that point. So it returns a, a new array, which are the points for this particular side. I'm going to call it side points. 
So these side points are going to be four for every um, iteration of this loop, which goes through each dimension. It goes through both sides, left, right, top, bottom, and, and front, back. And it keeps the points that are on the respective side. So once we have these points, let's call these points A, B, C, D. So this is going to be side points 0, side points 1, side points 2, and then also side points 3. And then I'm going to have a function called make triangle, which accepts three points and makes a triangle out of them. So I will need um, I will need two different triangles, A, B, C, and, and then A, C, D. So see how this looks like in our whiteboard. Um, so let's talk about this triangle, for example, on the front side. This has an A over here, a B over here. The order of points doesn't really matter in, in, in this case as long as they belong to, to the correct side. Okay, and then if this is going to be point D, um, then um, the first triangle is going to be A, B, C, and then the, the second triangle, let's say that we discard um, discard point A, and in its, uh, in its place we put, we put D, so these two triangles are going to share a side, and that side is going to be the green side over here, which is going to be um, C, B. So I need to keep A, B, C, and then keep also um, D, B, C. Let's see if I did it right. I didn't actually do it right. Um, it should be like this. Okay, and then this make triangle function will return a triangle, so I can just uh, push it to my triangles. And of course, the make triangle function doesn't exist there yet. I assumed it existed, and I wrote my code as if it, it was there, but I need to make it. And um, it's going to be made by um, just putting these three into an array. So each triangle is going to have, uh, it's going to be an array of three things, of three points. And recall that each point is an array of three coordinates, which are uh, floating point numbers. So the triangle's array is going to have uh, multiple elements, one for each triangle, and each triangle is going to have three elements, one for each point of the triangle, and then each of the points of the triangle is going to have three elements that are going to be x and y and, and z. Um, and then um, you may wonder why I'm making this make triangle function because it's so really, really simple. I could have just written ABC here, but we're going to be extending it later uh, when the order of the points um, starts to matter. So now that we have the triangles, I can um, make my uh, rendering function a little bit more interesting. Instead of having a render point function, I can make a render triangle function instead. Given a triangle, I can draw it. And this is going to work very, very similarly to the render point function, but instead um, instead of projecting one point, it's going to project all the points of the triangle. So I will have a projected triangle, which is going to have um, each point projected. So I will go to the triangle, and I will map my points of the triangle through the project function. And notice that the map um, function on the array object um, it um, applies this function to each of its elements. So it calls project with each of the three uh, points. It first calls project with the first point of the triangle, then with the second, and then with the third, and then this returns a, a, a new triangle, so an array of three things, each of which has uh, three points in it. So now that we have projected uh, our triangle, um, I, can grab, I can grab the points, I can call them A, B, C again, the first point of the triangle, the second point of the triangle, and the third point of the triangle. And in this case, because these are projected points, each of the ABCs are, actually has two dimensions in it. It has X and Y. Um, these are the things that we will use. Okay, and then in order to draw it, it's actually simple. I just need to use 2D drawings. Uh, since they are projected points, I can just draw them using 2D canvas. So I go to the first point, to the X and Y, uh, coordinates of the first point, and then I align to the second point. I draw a line between the first and the second points, and then I draw a line to the third point from the second point, and then I have to also draw a line back to the first point, A. Okay, so this renders one triangle, and in fact, I don't really need to render my points anymore. All I need to do is I need to render my triangles. So for each triangle, I will have it have it be rendered. Um, and then, um, so for each triangle, I will have it rendered, and I will call render 
render a triangle, triangle. And instead of rotating um, an individual point, I will uh, rotate all the points of the triangle. So I will do a triangle dot map point. And then this point is going to be changed here and returned. So this is the rotated triangle, which I'm going to be drawing. Okay, so let's see what we're doing here. This is um, this is going through the triangles array and it's calling the this function inside for each of the triangle elements. So it's passing me one triangle element that I'm about to draw. Before I render it, I will have to rotate it. So what I do is I, I take my triangle, which is a um, an array of three things, the three points, and I call the map function, passing uh, inside a function that allows me to transform the point, each point of the triangle. And this function is a lambda that takes a single point as an argument, and um, it does some things to it, it changes it. In particular, it rotates the point um, based on, uh, uh, or uh, it rotates the point around the y-axis, it also rotates the point around the x-axis, and then it rotates the, it returns the rotated point. Once it does this, it has processed all the points of the triangle, so it returns the rotated triangle that I'm passing through the render triangle function for drawing. And the render triangle function is what we what we um, created before, which does some basic projection and then just uh, drawing lines. So uh, let's see if this actually does anything or if we have any bugs here. Obviously, the first time always is buggy. So let's see what's going on. Um, this was a complicated code change. So let's see if, first of all, init geometry is working or um, or isn't. So let's start it, start it up. And um, you're calling make triangle. All right. And then init geometry is going to have these triangles there. Let's see. Um, so let's, um, let's actually break at this point and see what the triangle array looks like. Okay, so um, let's do triangles. Okay, so these are some triangles. Let's see how many triangles we have. So it's 12 triangles. That's correct because we need six sides and each side has um, two triangles in it. Um, so let's take a look at them. Okay, so each of them is going to be a triangle, so of course it's going to be an array of three points. Okay, and uh, because we're looping through the dimensions uh, when we're generating the triangles array, um, I expect the first two, uh, the first four triangles to pertain to to the uh, sides that are have um, x is equal to minus one, so that will be elements zero and one, and then um, the elements two and three are the um, triangles that have x is equal to plus 1. Okay, so let's see if this looks right. So the first triangle is going to have... Um, it's the first triangle, and it's going to have three points, 0, 1, and 2, and each of them is a three-dimensional array, which makes sense because there are points. So yeah, uh, actually these triangles look fine. They have... Um, they seem to have correct coordinates, so I'm guessing maybe the problem is in the, the uh, rendering function. So let's take a look at the rendering function as well. Um, so we have a render uh, render triangle, and I think the problem is really we're not setting the stroke style, which is a really silly bug, uh, considering the um, that we're doing all this 3D stuff. Okay, so um, stroke style, don't, don't forget to set your uh, colors. Okay, let's see if this works. And um, yes, we have actually sides and proper triangles for our cube. It's looking kind of cute. It looks more like a cube than before. Um, so that's pretty good. And um, the next step would be to start filling these sides with uh, color. It may have some weird overlapping effects, and you're going to see what I mean as soon as I start filling the sides. So let's go ahead and choose a few nice colors. We have. Um, we have six sides, so let's um, make an array of six colors. And I like uh, red, green, blue, of course, but also white, orange, purple, cyan, and um, uh, I don't know, gray. Yeah, maybe yellow. Okay. So um, these are my colors, and what I'm going to do is in my render triangle function, I will pass a color 
as a parameter so that it's not always white but it's something else so let's stroke it with this color uh, and also fill it with this color so fill style actually it's stroke it in black but fill it with uh, the color so we're gonna both stroke it and fill it cool so when I render my triangle, instead of just rendering it in white, I will pass in a color, which is going to be something out of my colors. And what is, what is it going to be out of my colors? Well, as I go through my triangles, I can get the index of my triangle from 0 up to 11. Um, and once I have that, I divide by 2 because each side has consecutive triangles in my array. So the first side is going to have triangles 0 and 1, the second side is going to have two and three and so on. So uh, if I do a math.floor, then the first two sides are gonna have the same color and then the next sides are gonna take the next color and so on. So um, this should do it. Yeah, so we got a cube with um, with colors on the side. It looks quite nice. Uh, that is really nice, I think, but um, something weird is going on and the thing is we can see through the cube. It's, it's not really proper. And uh, you can understand this because we, we're not really drawing the triangles in any particular order. Uh, you can see, for example, like the, the um, purple one is always drawn after the white one, so it overlaps the white one always, but sometimes the white one has to overlap the, pur the purple one, which it, it doesn't really do properly. Um, so let's see how we can do, we can, can solve this problem. In order to solve this problem, we have to talk about um, sides that are oriented. So um, these are sides, so if you have a triangle like this, um, this is the simplest kind of surface that you can imagine. It has three points A, B, C, and it has uh, basically it has two sides: the front side and the back side. Um, what we want to do in computer graphics is we want to choose one of the two sides and call it the actual side. So, say the front side of this triangle, we want to. Um, somehow make it different from the other one. And the way we do that is um, we, we do that by specifying the order of the points. So we say the triangle is A, B, C and not equal to A, C, B. And what we mean by A, B, C is, um, well, we mean the back side. And what we mean by A, C, B is we mean the front side. And how is this ex exactly evaluated is as follows. If we take the vector that connects um, A to B, so this particular side vector here, and also the vector that connects A to C, which is this one over there, then these two vectors, um, so, th so the first point of, of my triangle, second point of my triangle, these form the first side, and then the first point with my third point, they form the other side. So this is going to be side number one, this is going to be side number two. And what I do is I take the side number one and I take the cross product with that uh, with side number one between side number one and side number two. So in the case of triangle ABC, I take the cross product um, AB vector cross um, AC vector. And this is going to be a cross product that, that's going to look, um, it's going to be perpendicular to this surface. And for the case of AB cross AC, it's going to look inside. So it's going to be inside the, the plane while for the triangle ACB, it's going to be outside the plane, so it's going to look towards us. It's going to look like that. So this kind of cross product vector is what designates the, the, the phase um, orientation. Um, so if you're not familiar with cross products, I have provided a link in the description below where you can read about cross products on Wikipedia and also a link to a great book on linear algebra that explains all of this in a very detailed manner and you can uh, read them and educate yourself on this so that uh, you can understand it fully but um, if you're following this what we're going to do is uh, for our cube I will take each triangle and um, make sure that the orientation is correct in particular for the front side I'm going to make sure that both of these triangles face the front of the cube for the back side I'm going to make sure that both of these triangles face the back of the cube for the right side, I will make sure that these triangles face the right, and so on and so forth for each of these triangles. And this is why I've made make triangle a function so that it can choose the correct order. But in order to do that, I will need to implement a um, a uh, cross product function, and um, I don't feel like putting it here because this file is growing a little bit too large. So I'm going to make a uh, vector JS 
file. And in here, I'm going to use ECMAScript 6 classes. So I'm going to make a class vector. And inside my class vector, I will have a constructor, which takes x, y, and z. And let me make sure that this is called a constructor class. And I think it's called construct, but maybe called con it's called construct. Uh, it's called constructor. OK, so I was right. That was good. And um, uh, it's going to be using this kind of syntax, 0, 1, 2, so that we can use um, we can use it as an array. So I just pass 0, 1, 2 to it and store these things. And um, yeah, I will need a I will need a cross product. But um, notice that in my case here, when I want to take the cross product of two sides, I want to take the vector that connects A to B. And in order to do that, I need to take the vector of B, the point B, and subtract A from it. So I will need a subtraction function. So I will need to have a cross product function. Um, and I will need a um, subtract as well. And of course, to implement subtract, we need an add function and a scale function. So what these functions do is they do vector operations. Um, and what they do is they take maybe some arguments and they return a new vector that is the, the process vector, the, the, the result of this operation. So for example, in the case of add, this will return a new vector which will have coordinates as follows. It will have this 0 plus other 0. So it just adds the individual dimensions. So that's a new vector that add returns. And scale takes some sort of lambda parameter, which is just a scalar. Maybe let's call it scalar, not to be confused with the lambdas in, um, that, that are anonymous functions. and. Um, what it does is it multiplies, it multiplies this scalar with um, each of the dimensions of this. So it's going to look like that. And uh, don't be too confused with the fact that I'm using um, numerical um, syntax for the attributes of this. They're just attributes as usual. Um, they're just numbers, not a big deal there. And if I have to subtract uh, another vector, I can just do a return this dot add other dot scale by minus one. So the other vector is scaled by minus one, and if I add that that vector that has been scaled by minus one to this vector, then I get um, this minus other. So that does it. And then for the cross product, I need to take the formula for the cross product, and recall that the cross product is a new vector as well, which has x and y and z coordinates, and um, you can find out this um, this uh, formula on uh, Wikipedia, uh, for, for each dimension what it does is it takes the other two and it takes a, um, a determinant of the, um, of the matrix, of the, the respective matrix of their coordinates. So for example for the x case what it does is it takes this 0 times other 1 and then minus this 1 times other 1. Um, I'm sorry this should be a 0. And then um, Actually, this is the z dimension because it's not using the z dimension here. The x dimension is not going to be using x, so this is going to look like that. Um, and then it's going to be this um, 2 times other 1. And finally, the y dimension is going to be using x and z, so it's going to look like that. Um, so let's start with other. Uh, yeah. 2 and 0. So this is the this is the determinant in um, in uh, what the cross product formula is. So I think this completes the vector library and uh, let's load it up in my HTML before cube so that cube can use it. And let's see if it um, if it's actually loaded up or causes any errors. Good, our browser is dealing with classes quite nicely there. And instead of having um, instead of having points. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, I'm going to have um, vectors this time. So let's go ahead and do that. And when I do uh, when I initialize my points, I will do a new vector with this x, y, and z new vector. That's quite nice. And then when I do my um, my points filtering, I, I just take my points and I filter and I check here and I return point dimension. Okay. So I keep these side points that I want and I push them into 
triangles. That should work fine with objects as well as it worked with arrays. It should not have an issue. When I do my perspective projection, I can access these properties just fine. And then the same applies to um, my um, model to view trans transformation here. Um, and then finally, uh, in my um, in my render point function, I'm not I'm not only using that actually, so that's none of my concern right now. But um, it should still work. So it's maybe a good debugging function that we have there. In the case of render triangle, well, when we're, we're not really accessing the points other than looking at their uh, coordinates, and uh, and that's fine. But um, my projection function may be nicer if I if I reuse my um, my vectors. So I can just say here a new vector of x and y and z. And in my perspective projection, my z coordinate and my point is not really used, but I will still put it here. Um, um, and this is a technique that is commonly used in computer graphics that's useful for something that we're not going to do in this series of videos, but this can be used as something called the z-buffer. Um, that's not something that I'm going to explore today, so you can just also replace it with a zero, and it's not going to play any role whatsoever. And in the case of projection, I can um, also do a new vector over here, pass over the points x, y, and z, and then, um, well, z is still not important in this case, but I can still pass it over um, and it will be ignored, it doesn't really matter. But for completeness, since our vectors are 3D, we can just pass a dummy z value, it doesn't matter. And um, yeah, I think that's good. I think that, that looks nice. Um, so without applying any of the um, any of the complicated cross-product math, um, I just want to make sure that this still works as it is. And one thing that concerns me is the use of rotate. Uh, and I'm wondering whether it's really returning a new point or if it's modifying my points. Uh, actually, it's, ret it's re returning an array which is not a vector and I will not have the ability to do operations on it. So I'm thinking maybe I can move the rotate x and rotate y functions into the um, vector function or vector class. So it can look like that. And put it in and here we go and instead of returning an array as it does here I can make it return a new vector with uh, three dimensions like that in both the case of rotate x and rotate y so uh, let's see if our modifications to the vector library work uh, it's the first time that we use vectors instead of arrays and um, well um, it doesn't really work. So let's see why. Let's see why this doesn't work. We have an error. Rotate y is not defined, and that's because we removed the function, but we didn't make it. Uh, we didn't make the calls properly. So this should not take a point. It should just take theta. And uh, actually, here we don't need a point. We just need this. We have already all the data that we need as part of the class, um, the object actually. And um, yeah, that's it. And um, this should fix it. Okay, so that's good. It still works, and now we can apply our uh, cross products to our uh, vectors so that we can make them uh, correctly um, oriented. We can make our surfaces correctly oriented. And um, okay, so what we do, what we want to do is we're gonna gonna go to the make triangle uh, function, and um, we're gonna tell it in addition to the three points that we want to make be being made into the triangle, I want to have a dimension and a side parameter, uh, and this is going to designate to the make triangle function what is the dimension of the side. So is it an x dimension side, a y dimension side, or a z dimension side? And this is particular to making a cube. If you make more complicated objects, it's not going to be as simple as that. And side is going to be a minus one or a plus one to indicate if it's the, the first side of the two or the second side of the two very similar to the way we're doing here. So both of these are going to have uh, a dimension and a side parameter path like that. And again, for example, the first dimension, x, is going to have two sides, the left and the right side. The left side is designated by side is equal to minus 1, and the right side is designated by side is equal to plus 1. And cool, that's cool. So what we're going to make triangle do is I want to make it try and use a, b, c as a triangle if it's correct. So it's going to check if the cross product is correct. 
In order to do that, it's, it's going to grab the two sides of the triangle and recall that the two sides are b subtract, and I can use the subtract function I defined in my vector class. And uh, side 2 is going to be c subtract a. Now the orientation of this surface is going to be side 1 cross product and side 2. And if this cross product has the correct um, correct value, then um, that's what, that, that orientation is correct. And what is the correct value? Well, the orientation the orientation vector actually let's call it orientation vector to make sure that we understand it's a, it's a vector. It has three dimensions. It's a three dimensional vector, and we care about its um, its a particular dimension that was given to us for for the left and right sides. For example, we care about the x the x dimension of the orientation vector, and um, we want it to have the same sign as the side variable. So for the left, uh, for the left side of the cube, we want it to face left, as we saw here. So that means that, um, well, the left side of the cube has points that have a minus one in x. X is equal to minus one. Well, the orientation vector also has to have a negative x. In this case, it's going to have a negative four x because my cube is not a unit cube. Each of the sides has a length of 2, but uh, I only care about the sign. So I can say that math.sign of this is going to be the same as math.sign of that. And recall that the sign function, the math.sign function, just takes a, a numerical variable and it returns a sign, so either minus 1 or 0 or plus 1. So if it's of the correct sign, we can just return this triangle. Otherwise, we can return the triangle of, of the other orientation by flipping the sides, um, the first side and the second side. So the first side is going to be AC and the second side is going to be AB. And this completes the, the make triangle function which um, should now produce the correctly oriented triangles. Now that we have the triangles oriented correctly, all we have to do before we draw them is um, basically check if the triangle is facing the camera from which we're viewing the, the scene. So let's make sure that this still works. And uh, it doesn't actually, and the reason is that the cross product is somehow incorrect. It doesn't take another parameter, but now it should work. Okay, so here's still the cube. All we need to do now is just do the checks before rendering. So I care about the render triangle function, and um, notice that after the the cube has been projected. So let me clean this up a little bit. After the cube has been projected, you have some sort of side. Maybe it's also somehow uh, rotated, it doesn't matter, and maybe this is one of the sides, and then this is one of the other sides, this is, maybe it looks like that from the side, right, it doesn't really matter if it has been rotated somehow. Okay, so let's assume that this is the top side, and this is one of the triangles, right, then the orientation vector is going to look like that, it's going to point out of that, but once we project this into two dimensions, the triangle is going to have this kind of, uh, it's kind of shape in two dimensions. This angle is no longer going to be um, uh, perpendicular, and um, yeah, it's just going to be a weirdly projected triangle. And this vector, if this triangle is visible, it's going to be facing us. So it's going to have a z of um, of um, the correct side, so um, either negative or positive, depending on how we have positioned our camera, right? But if a side is not facing us, so in this case, uh, let's take the blue side as the back side of the cube, and this has two triangles as well. If this is not facing us, then the orientation vector is going to look maybe a little bit like the yellow vector, so it's going to go inside. And once we project that, this is going to be facing, this, the z dimension of that is going to be facing the opposite direction of the one that is facing us. So all we need to do is really just check that one, um, the one z dimension. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and um, check that, and I will create a helpful function called ccw, which is going to say it's going to take another vector and it's going to calculate if uh, if the orientation is counterclockwise or um, or clockwise. And recall that if we have a point A and a point B, that's side A, that's side one, and if we have A and C, and that's side two. Counterclockwise means, well, is this kind of arrow pointing in a clockwise direction or in a counterclockwise direction? In this case, this is a clockwise direction, so CCW should return false. In order to do that, I will just take um, 
this so cross product with the other, and I'm going to take the z dimension of that and check if it's positive. So if it's positive, the the the, the direction, the orientation is counterclockwise. Otherwise, it's clockwise. Um, now we're ready to just do this check. So um, let's create the two sides of the triangle that we're about to draw. Side one, it's going to be M A R B subtract A, and then side two is C subtract A subtract A. Yeah. So let me make sure I did it correctly here as well. So this is B subtract A and C subtract A. Yeah, I think that looks right. So what we will do is side one cross uh, cross product our CCW with side two, and if it has a positive um, positive sign, then um, it's going to be drawn. Otherwise, we're just not going to draw that side at all. So let's see how this looks like, and still not going to look perfect. Let's see how this looks like. Uh, it looks actually incorrect. So we need to go ahead and debug what's going on with the sides. Um, First of all, the first thing I want to do is um, actually try the opposite. Try and say if it's not clockwise, then draw it. Okay, it still doesn't look right. So we need to play with it a little bit better. And um, I think this is the correct orientation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, by looking at the cube, you can see that the y dimension sides are wrong, the, 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 y, the white one and the blue one. And the reason for this is really that um, if you notice the, the view model transformation has a flip in the y side. So for these triangles, we need to also do a flip in our, um, in our orientation. So in case, um, in case we are talking about the y um, dimension, we need to have a flip side passed to the make triangle function. So if dimension is y, this is a designated dimension for our particular case of um, drawing the inverted coordinates because canvas has an inversion in the y side. Whoops, I made a mistake there. Um, if, if you notice, after the projection, the, the cross product vectors should be flipped and that's that's a correct observation however this should not affect the proper orientation of the side so putting a minus there is wrong the problem with the y dimension is that I made a, a sign mistake in my cross product code you will notice that in the x and the z dimension of the cross product I use the plus sign but I also use the plus sign in the minus portion of the cross product and that needed to be a minus so these two minuses cancel out but two wrongs don't make a right the correct way to solve this problem is to fix the vector library with a correct cross product formula inversion in the y side so I think this may be um, the, the proper way to go there okay it's actually completely opposite of what we want so I think we may be needing a not in my if. Let's see if this works. Okay, so this fixes it and uh, we, we needed to flip the y sides and we needed to also flip a sign on the CCW product but other than that we have a proper um, rendering of the cube and um, one thing to notice about this object is that it's a simple 3D object it doesn't have any um, anything that can be drawn over itself um, other than sides that are facing opposite directions. So in our case, for example, the blue side is facing the opposite direction of the, of the white side and it never really gets drawn over each other because only the correct sides are drawn each time because the cube is a simple shape. But for more complicated shapes, you would need a more complicated algorithm to draw, um, to draw the sides correctly. Okay.